This is Burning Brightly, a podcast for Christian moms who are feeling called to build a business and share their light with the world. I'm Bonnie Wiscom, a life coach, mom, and entrepreneur, and I'm honored to be your guide as you face this business building adventure full of highs, lows, and everything in between. This is where we help each other find the courage to shine. Welcome back, friends. Today, I want to talk about an amazing book that I read last year. Are you guys book readers? If uh, you want to join me on Goodreads, come find me over there because I love love reading books and I also love sharing my favorite books with people. But last year, I read this book called The Gap and the Gain. And if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend it. It's by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. And it was a really unique look at gratitude, living in gratitude and abundance instead of lack and scarcity, which I think is really, really important. And we talk a lot about in our life coaching sessions. So an easy way to explain the concept of the gap versus the gain is like this. Let's say that where we currently are is the main floor of a home or a building. Where we were in the past is like the basement where we've come from and where we want to go is the second floor. But how so many of us live our lives is instead of rejoicing at how far we've come up from the basement, most of us spend way too much time looking upwards at the second floor where we want to be. But there's one major problem with this aspect of living life, and that is that the second floor keeps moving. Okay, so we create goals, we have um, aspirations, and when we get there, it's never good enough. We think we want one thing, we want to reach a specific Uh, goal, outcome. And then when we get there, we often move the goal without spending any time rejoicing or celebrating in how far we've come. So that's the essential idea of the gap and the gain. The authors say that the gain is how far we've come up from the basement and the gap is how far we have to go to reach our goals. But the gap just keeps growing. That's the problem. So I just love this concept so much. And I talked about it to anyone who would listen to me for months after reading the book because it was so revolutionary to me. Maybe just the way they explained it was so clear. But as I continue to grow my own business, I have realized that living in the gain instead of the gap, especially with God, gives us three main benefits. So I'm going to talk about why we want to live in that gain instead of the gap. So the first main benefit is that it keeps us grateful. I mentioned at the beginning, right? We want gratitude and abundance versus lack and scarcity. It just feels so much better and it keeps us happier. Those who live in the gain, that is the period between where they've been in the past and where they currently are, how far they've come, they realize how much they've done. But more importantly, they realize that God is the one who has gotten them this far. Pretty cool. If we are going to be Christians living in the gain, we have to remember that God helps us get there. We are conscious when we live in this gain of how much we've been given. We're conscious that we have these physical blessings. We recognize opportunities that have come to us and we are constantly thanking God for them because we know that it's thanks to him. We have all these amazing things and opportunities. It is really, really hard to be unhappy and dissatisfied with life and bitter when you are looking at everything you've been given and all the things you've been able to accomplish. The trick obviously here is acknowledging God's hand in all things. If we don't acknowledge God's hand, we run the risk of just becoming narcissists and talking about how wonderful we are We are all the time. We want to acknowledge that he is the reason we got here. So there, there are three main ways that I personally try to do this. And I want to share them with you guys because I think they're really important. One I've shared before, but these other ones are, are important too. So when I see God intervening in my business in some way, so that could look like Um, an opportunity that I didn't see coming. It could look like some unexpected income in my business. It could look like meeting just the right person at just the right time. The first thing I do is I say a prayer of gratitude. So I acknowledge to God, hey, I see your hand in this and I'm so grateful for it. Thank you. That did not go unnoticed by me. I think that's the most important thing. Dear God, I see you. I thank you. I needed that. And I promise not to squander that blessing. I will use it to the best of my ability. So that's the first thing I do is that prayer of gratitude. The second thing I do when I see God's hand in my life, especially in my business, is I tell someone. Sometimes it's just my husband will lay there in bed at night and I'll go, you know what happened today? I think this was really cool. This was definitely from God and I really appreciate that and I'm so grateful for it. Um, Very often it's my business bestie. If you don't have a business bestie, you need one. Go find somebody who's building a business and become best friends with them or another Christian friend. And the reason it's going to be a believer is because it has to be someone who's going to feel awe and gratitude along with you. You don't want to tell 
your neighbor who doesn't believe in anything because they're probably not going to appreciate it the way you appreciate it. They're probably just going to write it off as coincidence or luck. You don't want that thought to permeate your brain. You want to acknowledge that it comes from God and be grateful. In the end, I believe that everything good that comes into our life comes from God. But even if it doesn't, even if it is coincidence, wouldn't you much rather be guilty of thanking God for too much than too little? I don't think that is a thing that we can thank God for too much. But I definitely want to share the news with someone else because I think not only does it strengthen my own faith in what just happened, it also helps strengthen my friend's faith by sharing it, by acknowledging that something good happened in my life, thanks to God, they can also start looking for it in their life. So prayer of gratitude, sharing with somebody, and then finally, I write it down. This is the thing that I've talked about in other episodes. One of my most prized possessions is my journal of God's dealings in my life. It's just a regular old journal, notebook, whatever. And anytime I see tiny miracles or beautiful coincidences or other inspirational happenings, I write them down in this journal so that I can acknowledge that they happened and I can look back at them when things get tough. This is one of my favorite ways to lean into gratitude. It's a written record that I can look at anytime I need to, to get just a shot of inspiration or some of those warm fuzzies, right? Just that feeling that I need to remind myself that God is with me and that I'm on the right path. So prayer of gratitude, sharing with somebody who will appreciate it with you and then writing it down. I think those are really, really important ways to keep us grateful and living in the gain. The second benefit to living in that gain, especially with God as our partner, is that we acknowledge our infinite potential and how far we can get with him by our side. Like I mentioned before, if we rely just on our own merits, our own efforts in looking back at how far we come, we run the risk of becoming egotistical narcissists where we just think we're so great. But if you've noticed, we Christian women do not usually swing that direction of the pendulum, right? The pendulum swings in the opposite direction where we are self-deprecating, berating ourselves, beating ourselves up. We downplay our efforts and talents and pretend that we didn't do any of it ourselves. We Christian women love to put our own abilities, just really downsize our own abilities and our gifts and our accomplishments And we think that we're doing that to make us humble. In fact, I have an entire episode that's going to be all about this concept. So just just wait and watch for that one because I think it's really important. But instead of becoming narcissists and, you know, egotists, we instead think, well, I didn't really do that much. I mean, God put this in my way and somebody did this part and it just, it wasn't really a big deal. We need to stop that immediately. I'm not saying we have to think that it's all about us, but if we do not acknowledge our own potential, we will never get anywhere. We will just sit there and just think it's all coincidence and all luck. It's not luck. How far you've come so far is a combination of God's help, your own unique talents and abilities, and your own hard work. Acknowledge that and embrace it. And if you can, there's no stopping you in the future, okay? All this does, downplaying our own abilities and talents, is keeps us safe. And God doesn't want us to stay safe. He wants us to do scary things. I know that is hard to hear, but please do not deny the gifts that God has given you and the growth that he has helped you acquire. Both of those things are so important to acknowledge. If you struggle to acknowledge this potential for greatness, because I know we all do, remember that that's not God's influence on you. That is somebody else's influence telling you that you're not talented and you're not great and you don't know how to work and you don't know how to do anything good. That is Satan's influence. So please pay attention to that and kick it to the curb. If there's one way that Satan can keep God's people from changing the world, it's by telling them, well, you're just not good enough. Sure, you could start that business like so-and-so over there, but you're not as pretty as her and you don't have the talents that she has and you don't have the abilities and you're not rich enough and you're not young enough. It's all nonsense. It's all his way of keeping you stuck and safe. So please do not buy into any of that. Do not believe that downplaying your abilities and talents is making you humble. That's not humility. It is just hiding. Those are, there's my tough love for today, okay? So step into the gain of your life, how far you've come. Regularly look at what you've built. And if you're just at the beginning of your business, that's great. Look at who you've been able to help in your life outside of things, maybe through church or your family or your community. This is not bragging. It is celebrating God's goodness because without him, we are nothing. And so when we celebrate all the things we've been able to accomplish, we're also celebrating him. And we're acknowledging that we have so much more to give. I'll get off my soapbox now, but that part is really important for me. Please acknowledge your potential with God's help. The third way that living in the gain helps us is that it fights imposter syndrome. This ties a little bit in with number two. Everyone has talents and expertise, but when we are constantly looking upwards towards those impossible goals that we've made for ourselves, 
we very often feel like an imposter, especially when we start comparing ourselves with others who may be a little bit farther ahead, if you want to call it that, in their entrepreneurial journey. So let me just tell you about myself for a second. I have built a business of one kind or another for over 10 years. I've been an entrepreneur for over 10 years. I have learned so much. I've learned how to use software and done marketing and sales and so many amazing talents. And I have made thousands of dollars and I've been able to figure out how to build businesses while having a ton of babies and homeschooling them all at the same time. But I still feel like an imposter all the time. Like I said, especially when I look at others who maybe look like they're a little bit farther ahead on, than me on this success path or where I measure myself against impossible standards. My goals are always moving. I reach them and then I make another one that's farther along. And what that very often does is just keeps me dissatisfied. And that is not godly. Measuring backwards, they say this a lot in the Gap in the Game book, measuring backwards has me realize that I do know stuff and I know how to learn and I belong in the entrepreneurial space just like you do. Anyone who has that spark to go build something of their own belongs in that space. I'll tell you a quick little story. Um, a couple weeks ago, I signed up to do a presentation at a co-working space. So that's one of the, these offices where people can just rent a space to come work um, from their computer and um, you know get a little bit of networking, meet some people and also have a quiet office space if you don't have that at home. And I showed up and I had imposter syndrome majorly because I just haven't uh, been around a lot of people working regular jobs. I've been around a lot of moms. <laughs> so I feel like I fit in with the moms. I feel like I don't always fit in with the people who have full-time gigs, especially if they work for a corporation that is not their own. So I was feeling some major imposter syndrome. I've since been back to this co-working space and have met a bunch of people and love it and realize I totally belong here. I'm an entrepreneur building something amazing, but it still comes up a little bit for me, especially when I share what I do or my history or the fact that I've spent most of the last 18 years just wiping baby bums and not necessarily being in a work space. So just acknowledge when that comes up for you. Realize that you have things to give to the world and you have already made it a better place in so many ways. That is true of every one of us. Unless you've lived in a cave and haven't interacted with anyone, you have made the world a better place. So acknowledge that, write it down if you need to, and come back to that. Remind yourself every time you start feeling like an imposter. You have so many experiences and opportunities that have made you who you are today. Well, another exercise I love doing is uh, thinking about myself as a 17 or 18 year old and looking at myself today as a 43 year old. I think I would be amazed. I would think, wow, look at all the things you've accomplished. Look at all the talents you've created. Look at all the things that you've done. Sometimes it's fun for me to just think back at that teenage self and how amazed she'd be at all the opportunities I've had to enjoy and to learn in my life. So do the same exercise for you if you need to. If you think, if you truly think that a younger you would be disappointed in you today, then don't do this exercise. <laughs> you need to work on some thoughts first. But just acknowledge how much you have done because I guarantee it's more than you are realizing. Finally, I want to talk for a second about goals because you might be wondering, well, how do I make goals and look forward to them if I'm always measuring backwards? If I'm always looking at how far I've come, goals are still important, right? And the only way to move forward? Yes, absolutely. Goals are still important. So keep a few things in mind when making these goals in order to still live in the game. The first one, celebrate old goals first before you make new ones. We love to hit goals, smile for five seconds, and then start thinking of the next one. Oh, I'm so glad I got my website up and running. Yay me. Oh, but I still have to do the email list. Oh, but I still have to figure this out. Oh, stop that. Celebrate, like truly celebrate. One time, a friend and I, a business friend and I, uh, did a online webinar together and we live in separate states and after the webinar we decided to both drive to Dairy Queen with each other on the phone and get an ice cream cone together and that was so fun it was a real physical manifestation of our celebration after putting countless hours into this webinar and making it happen something that was kind of scary and overwhelming for us so please create a celebration it doesn't have to be sugar but that's fun sometimes <laughs> stop take time to celebrate take time to lean into that accomplishment and remember our gratitude practice on step one, say that prayer of gratitude. Thank you, God, for letting me, helping me reach this goal. And then tell a friend or five or the internet, put it on Facebook, tell a lot of people and write it down in your journal so that you can celebrate both you and God's hand in this thing. Okay, so celebrate the old goals. Another idea is something that I tried a little while ago, a few years ago, when I made my last dream board, which I highly recommend doing. It's so fun. It's like scrapbooking. <laughs> you get a big poster board, cut out some magazine uh, pictures, put them up on the things that you want to accomplish or acquire in your life. But I, I created the dream board and then I drew a line down the middle of the poster board. And on the other side, I made a gratitude board. So 
I had all my dreams and future goals on one side and all my current blessings and past accomplishments on the left side. And what that did for me was anytime I was tempted to to be annoyed or frustrated that I hadn't reached my future goals yet, I just looked at all the amazing things I already had, all the things the Lord had already blessed me with, and I was so inspired to keep going. It is not a lack that inspires us to keep going. It's not. I know a lot of people say, well, I was really inspired when I was down and out and had nowhere to go but up. Yeah, sometimes that can be inspiring too, but I think more than anything, I'm inspired when I realize how much I have already accomplished and how much God has already given me. If he's given me this much, I can ask for more. I can keep improving and keep growing. So having a gratitude board is really, really helpful. In addition, another thing to remember is to never use your goals against yourself. They are just made up. There is no goal police that's coming around and saying, "Um, you said you were going to hit that sales goal by January and you didn't hit it until August fail. No, that doesn't happen. (laughs) They're just made up. If you don't reach them, quote unquote, on time, it doesn't matter. Or if you don't quite reach them at all, celebrate anyway. Look for every reason you can to lean into the good and amazing and incredible stuff you've already accomplished and ignore that pull to beat yourself up. Do not listen to that mean girl in your head that says, yeah, but you didn't quite make it. Yeah, but so-and-so over there, she beat your goal in half the time. No, none of that. Quiet that girl up. (laughs) Shut her up and celebrate every step that you have made moving forward, okay? Never, never, never use those goals to beat yourself up. Not helpful. And then finally, ensure that your goals really are in keeping with the business that you want to build and the life that you want to create. You get to decide what success looks like. Let's say you have no desire to manage a team. You think the idea of having your own team and your own business is terrifying then don't make a goal to make a million bucks because you probably need a team to get there. Maybe your goal is to make 500,000. You can do that all by yourself. I don't know. Maybe you can make a million all by yourself, but just acknowledge what your goals and idea of success are and then work towards them, not somebody else's idea of success. Only you decide what that is. And don't let anybody else downplay what you're building. If they ask you about your business and you share something and it says, oh, you're only making that much money, ignore them. You go back to your own definition of success. Maybe your definition of success is to just make $200 a month to help with the electricity bill and always be there for your kids. That's success. It's between you and God only. So don't let anybody else downplay it, but more importantly, don't you downplay it because you get to decide what success is. That being said, don't play small just because you think you can't make it big. Okay, friends, I hope that was helpful. Just as a recap, Three ways to keep you living in the gain and how that will benefit you. First one is it keeps you in gratitude. Second one, it keeps reminding you of your potential success, your your unlimited potential that you have along with God by your side. And then the third is it fights that imposter syndrome that keeps popping up for us, especially as Christian women. So go out there, live in the gain. Tell me what you've accomplished. I'd love to hear it. Come visit me on Instagram. Talk to you later. Are you ready to get started on your dream business? Join Finding Your Side Hustle, my digital course that will guide you through discovering what it is you love and how to turn it into a family-friendly business. Are you ready for one-on-one support as a mom or entrepreneur? Schedule a free coaching call with me to work on the goals you have for your life, including business success, weight loss, or better relationships. I can't wait to help you make progress on your dreams.